Hi there everyone. Today I'm going to be talking about quadratic equations. Now this is the fourth video in P1 Mathematics for CIE, the uh, quadratic section is the fourth video. We're talking about quadratic equations. Now we've dealt with linear equations, linear inequations. Quadratic equations now are just equations that have an x squared term as the highest power of x. And uh, also, just to make myself perfectly clear, you can't have, uh, it's, a, it's a polynomial, so you can't have like 1 over x or the square root of x or anything like that. So this is a polynomial with x squared as the highest power of x. First thing I think it's, it's important to understand is the difference between expression, equation, and then the curve or the graph of this thing here. So an expression here uh, doesn't have an equal sign in it, so we can simplify that thing, we can factorize that thing. That's all we can do with it. Um, it's just sitting there. An equation has an equal sign in it. That's the difference right there. So now we can solve this. So we've got an equation. We're going to be asking you to solve it. So find the values of x that make it true. And the last one, a curve. If we've got y equals, now there's a relationship between y and x that we can graph on the coordinate axes. And we can actually look at a graph of these. Now, these are all very much interrelated. Um, so the equation of this, we're finding that's equal to zero. What we're actually finding is we're finding the roots or the x-intercepts of that graph. So if we were to draw the quadratic equation, maybe it looks something like this, we're actually finding these values here. What are the x values where that thing is equal to zero? Called the roots or the uh, x-intercepts, um, the solutions of, the, of, of that particular equation. So um, quadratics have this kind of parabola kind of shape. We call it a parabola. And you'll notice, therefore, that there is two solutions of x uh, where the curve is equal to zero. Whereas we had a linear equation, there's often only one. For a lot of these, there's going to be two answers or two values of x that make the equation true. And there's a whole heap of ways that I'm going to go through here as how to find what those two values are. Firstly, we're going to talk about factorizing to find the answer, completing the square and then using the quadratic formula. So firstly, factorization. Uh, the reason why we want to factorize, so start with something that's a sum of terms and make it into a product, is this exact reason right here. That when we have two things multiplied together giving zero, it means one of them is zero, or the other one is zero, or both is zero. So that's why we want to convert sums to products when we are doing factorizing, because it helps us to solve equations and find, find the values that we want for this thing. So if we take this example here, x squared plus x minus 6. The way that we go about factorizing this, and you, you may have studied this before, I'm pretty sure, so really this is going to be a real quick overview, is we put two brackets like this, and we're going to say what... Uh, x and x are the first two terms there because we know we've got x times x is going to give us x squared. Now we know that the two numbers here at the end are going to multiply to give me 6. But they also have to add to give me the number in front of the x there. So if I just kind of write down the pairs of numbers that multiply to give me 6. Now I want two numbers here that add to give me 1. So I reckon 3 and negative 2. There we go. That is the answer to that. 3 and negative 2. So that's what I put in there. Plus 3 and negative 2. And then we get an x squared minus 2x plus 3x is plus x. And 3 times negative 2 is negative 6. So I've got it. When it is written like this, it's really easy to see what the solutions for that quadratic equation are. They're the two values of x that make each bracket 0. So in this case, the value of x that we need is negative 3. And in this case here, the value of x that we need is 2. So the two values of x here are negative 3 and 2. In this second example, you'll notice that the coefficient, that is the number in front of the x squared term is not 1, it's 2, makes things a little bit trickier. Uh, it just means that you have to start off with 2x and x in these brackets here. You still need two numbers that are going to multiply to give me this last term here, 3. And then it's just a little bit of a guessing game. I, oh, I think that's the easiest way that, that I do it. So two numbers that multiply to give me 3. So I could try uh, 3 here and one here, so there's only really one choice. When I do that, I get 2x squared there, I get 2x there, and I get a 3x there. And I want to get plus 5x. So I could, I guess, say that's plus 2x and plus 3x. Sounds good. But when I do the last one, 3 times 1, I get plus 3. But I want negative 3. Hmm, so that's a problem. 
Okay, let's try this again. Let's try some different numbers. Uh, let's put the three here and the one here. Check it out, two x squared, sounds good. Uh, two x times three will give me a six x term and one times x will give me one x. Now given that I want plus five x, I'm gonna go plus six x and minus one x. That will give me five x. And then negative one times positive three gives me negative three, so that is good. Uh, this is how we factorize that expression there. So once we get that, and got that equal to zero, the two values of x that I need for this bracket, if x is a half, then this is gonna be equal to zero. If x is negative three, this is gonna be equal to zero. So the two values of x that I want are a half and negative three. Just a quick, um, I guess, shortcut that I use for brackets like this one here. It's always this number divided by this number and the opposite of that sign. So if I have a bracket that looks like this, three x plus four, x minus two equals zero. I know that for this one here, the value of x is this number, four, divided by this number, three, and the opposite of that sign. So negative four over three is one of my solutions there. A little bit of a shortcut. There are a lot of questions in the exam where you have to factorize quadratics and be a bit of a Jedi master at it. So I've got all kinds of different cases here, for example, so if we've got a perfect square, which means each bracket is the same. So x squared plus six, x plus nine. So both both brackets are x plus three. Uh, so x plus three squared equals zero. So there's actually only one solution for these. So when you're looking at this in terms of a graph for this one here, negative three is the only solution for this quadratic. So what it will do, it'll come down and it'll just touch there at negative three, okay? So that is the only solution for that quadratic. So it just touches right there on the x-axis, only one solution, same with the second one there. You also have a difference of two squares. So this is a special case where you can factorize it, x plus three, x minus three, and this works because we've got x squared there, minus three x plus three x, the middle terms disappear, three times negative three gives us negative nine. So, um, this works when we've got uh, the difference of two perfect squares. So 4x squared minus 25, 2x minus 5, 2x plus 5. So the brackets are the same, one's plus and one is minus. Sometimes you might only have two terms, so x squared minus 5 equals zero, so we don't have the x term. Easiest way to do that is just add the five to both sides and then take the square root of both sides. Remembering that when we take the square root of both sides, you need the positive and the negative root. If we've just got the x squared term and the x term and no number term, then we've just got a common factor of x. And that's what I've done from here to here. Let's take out a common factor of x. And then we can say, well, what value of x makes that zero? Well, that's just zero. What value of x makes this zero? The answer is four, so zero or four. And I've got a few examples like that. Sometimes we get a quadratic like this where there's a common factor that we can take out first. This is really common. And here we've got three is common to all of these. So first I take out a factor of three and then I factorize the quadratic that's left over in there using the normal techniques to give me negative four or one. Notice this part here has no effect on the solution for this particular quadratic. Okay, second method for solving quadratics is called completing the square. Now we did this before, uh, back in video one, the first thing here was about completing the square. So this one here is just how you would use that technique to actually solve the equation. So we've got x squared plus six x minus three. So if you recall back in that video here, when we are completing the square, this number here is half of this number here. So we get x plus three all squared. I can do that in my head, that's x squared plus six x plus nine, but we wanted minus three. To go from nine to minus three, I have to subtract 12. So this whole thing here now, we have completed the square, x plus three squared minus 12. I then add 12 to both sides, from here to here. Take the square root of both sides from here to here, remembering the plus or minus, and then subtract three from both sides to get my final answer for x. So notice there's two solutions, negative three plus or minus the square root of 12. So this method's good to use if the coefficient of the x term is, is even. The last method is the quadratic formula. Now I'm not gonna go through the derivation of the formula here today, 
But this is a formula that you can use for any quadratic equation that you get. It works all the time. So uh, some people, once they see this, this is the only thing they use, and I don't recommend that. This is definitely the third on my list of things to do. You notice that factorizing is first, and that is always the way that you should do first. And I think so many questions in the exam can be factorized and are so much easier to solve if you'll do it that way, if you know how to do it. This is uh, the worst case scenario if something does not factorize. You do have a formula that you can use to solve a quadratic equation. So here's the formula here, and there's a little rhyme that I use to remember this one here. So um, the coefficients here, uh, A is the number in front of the x squared, B is the number in front of the x, and C is the term sitting in the end. So uh, the values of x that make this true, that solve this equation, are uh, need to be plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a. So if there was a very negative boy who was undecided about going to a really radical party, he didn't know whether to be squared but he missed out on four awesome chicks. The party was all over by 2 a.m. All right, I won't say that again. You can rewind it. That's the way that I remembered the quadratic formula. Um, it's on the formula sheet, so maybe you don't have to remember it, but I like it. So there you go. Um, there's a quadratic formula. So if we get this one here, x squared plus 6x minus 3 equals 0, then a is equal to 1, that's the number in front of the x squared, b is equal to 6, and c is equal to negative 3. And then you just carefully substitute those in. Okay, negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a. So I've just substituted those three values in. Work out next what is underneath that square root sign. So do this calculation here on your calculator or in your head. So 36 minus negative 12 is 36 plus 12 is 48. So negative 6 plus or minus the square root of 48 over 2, which when you get your calculator out, gives you these two values of x. And remember what this means. If we were to draw the graph of this thing here, it means that on this quadratic here, the solutions, the roots, are negative 6.46 and positive 0.464.